uric acid was once upon a time known to be an innocent bystander only implicated in kidney stones and gout what if i told you that uric acid is now a major player in our metabolic health please allow me to explain My name is Dr. Enin, doctor pharmacist and a functional medicine doctor, and welcome to the channel. What is uric acid? Uric acid is a byproduct of purine metabolism. And what is purine? Purine is a natural substance in the body that serves so many useful functions and also makes up a core of our genetic material, which is our DNA and RNA. So where do we get purine from? There are two sources, exogenous and endogenous. Exogenous, which is coming from our diet, and endogenous, which is made in the body. As far as the exogenous sources go, which is the ones coming from our diet, where do we get our exogenous sources of purine from? There are three sources, alcohol, fructose, and meat. And these are the only sources of purine. So how does purine become uric acid there is an enzyme called xanthine oxidase in medicine or clinically we call it the biological catalyst in medicine we have what we call xanthine oxidase which is an enzyme in biology we call it the biological catalyst is peace reactions are so what causes uric acid to skyrocket in the body the first one is overindulgence in foods that is rich in purines the second part is a dysfunctional kidneys or on the secretion of uric acid by the kidneys this is what happens physiologically we have purines gets broken down to uric acid then it gets excreted through the urine if the kidney is dysfunctional then we have a rise in uric acid called hyperuricemia and this is where i want us to focus you will only see or talk about uric acid at the level where we have gout or kidney stones and usually in the body you will see the number approaching seven or a bit over seven and that is when we have gout or gouty arthritis it was only seen only when we had gout but it goes beyond that right now with our modern day diet we have a lot of purines we have a lot of uric acid in our system and that's causing different kind of reactions because when uric acid is high it goes through the bloodstream and it impacts the bloodstream from a physiological standpoint to do a lot of damage it decreases something we call nitric oxide because what is happening is once purines is broken down to uric acid it goes through the bloodstream and it causes inflammatory response keep in mind in our arteries is where we make a nitric oxide which pushes oxygen and blood it's a vasodilator. In the presence of uric acid, all this is diminished. Clinically, we don't have to be close to that number seven before we act on it because anything beyond 5.5 as far as uric acid levels will cause problems and that's where the focus should be as i'm talking to you right now we should treat uric acid as a biomarker that we want to test on our annual physical just like you do your a1c just like you do your fasted insulin it is that important because a rise over 5.5 can cause metabolic mayhem it could be the reason for your hypertension because when you have high levels of uric acid it causes injury to the kidneys and that spikes blood pressure when you have a rise in uric acid it causes nitric oxide to decrease and that causes insulin resistance it also affects cognitive decline or function so it is very important that we understand the implications of uric acid beyond gout you only see gout when it's over seven there are people who have hypertension right now and their hypertension is coming because they have high levels of uric acid we have people fighting insulin resistance right now as a result of high uric acid not as high to cause gout but good enough to cause metabolic mayhem everybody whether diabetic or not whether hypertensive or not should have uric acid levels below 5.5 very very important so we need to know that uric Uric acid is implicated in all these diseases, hypertension, high blood glucose, kidney disease, cognitive decline, obesity, high fat levels in the blood, specifically triglycerides. So this is why we have to pay attention to uric acid. Now, one who ask, can we test uric acid at home? It's very possible. We have blood test strips that you could use to test your uric acid. We have test strips that you can use to test uric acid in the urine. All of them are available. So what are the practical solutions to this? Before I started, I did mention the purines come from two sources, the endogenous source and the exogenous source. Exo means coming from outside. 
and this will be the diet and on the diet side alcohol fructose meat so in order to bring these levels down what do we need to address first we need to address the diet we need to cut down the carbohydrates the sugar the starches the meat the seafood the cellular foods like the venison like the liver alcohol beer so these are the areas we want to start addressing in terms of the exogenous sources i have also said that anytime we have this situation of uric acid it means that we have a problem with the kidneys on the secretion of uric acid means that we need to also pay attention to the kidneys so we need to address that issue what is causing the kidney not to do the job that it's supposed to do by way of excretion so that is another area that we have to look at as a take home i need you to appreciate that uric acid once an innocent bystander now is a central player in metabolic disease or metabolic catastrophe so if you have hypertension if you have insulin resistance if you are obese if you have high triglycerides you want to start paying attention to uric acid beyond that you want to pay attention to the things that you're also doing because uric acid is now a major player in our metabolic health now i need to establish this in terms of converting purine to uric acid it uses an enzyme called the xanthine oxidase in clinical settings we have a drug we have a prescription drug called allopurinol its job is to cut or inhibit xanthine oxidase we have natural supplements that can equally do the same we have something called quercetin that's an excellent job inhibiting xanthine oxidase because when you inhibit xanthine oxidase you don't convert purines to uric acid vitamin c also does an excellent job doing that and the last product is called luteolin or americans would like to say luteolin 500 milligram of quercetin 500 milligram of vitamin c and 100 milligram of luteolin will do a better job to inhibit that conversion of purine to uric acid the take home message for you know that uric acid is now a central player in our metabolic health and we should treat it the same way we treat hemoglobin a1c the same way we treat our fasted insulin the same way we treat other biomarkers so the next time you're at your doctor's office you want to ask for them to test for your uric acid if your doctor is not is unwilling to test for one reason or the other just ask them what is the cost to pay out of pocket i don't think it's that expensive by so doing you'll be on the right spot in fixing your metabolic issue if you have come this far with me it means that this channel is for you please don't forget to like follow share and subscribe so the next time you have an idea beautiful such as this you'll be one of the first to know until another episode we'll catch you later